Okay, today's project, we're gonna be laying out all of these weld bungs for these valves to go on this six by six square tube. Now this is 316 L stainless. 316 stainless has a little bit more nickel content in it than 304 stainless, so it's a little more um, corrosive, corrosion resistant and it can put up a little more chemicals and everything. A lot of you guys in a previous video saw a big top kick or Kodiak truck sitting outside with some toolboxes on it and asked me, I was like, hey, did you get a new service truck? No, I didn't get a new service truck. Uh, that's actually a brush truck that belongs to a local volunteer fire department. I've had this job going with a uh, fire department for a while. They dropped two of their brush trucks off and we went over the design layout and everything and I finally ordered all the parts, but then as soon as I ordered the parts, we had a supply chain issue. They had a F550 and I didn't film that. So what they wanted me to do, they wanted me to take the engine that was on the top kick take it off and put it on an F550 and take the engine on the 550 off and set it down. Um, that motor is sitting over there right now and I don't know if they're, now hopefully I can wheel and deal and get that engine from them because it's a little three cylinder Kubota engine and I want to make a little project out of it. But they bought a brand new three cylinder diesel engine with the water pump on the back of it. It's a little bigger pump, a little higher gallons per minute, which puts that brush truck in a different class. What this is, is it's uh, laying down. It'll eventually stand straight up. There'll be these valves on it. This is a half inch kind of weld bung with the nipple threaded into it. So this half inch is going to go on the bottom right here and it's going to have a stainless valve and a garden hose connection so they can hook up a normal garden hose to it and then uh, use it however they want to. This is all of these fittings on here were per their request. I'm not exactly sure what they're going to hook up to it, why they're going to hook up to it other than the inch and a half and the two and a half. Inch and a half, two and a half is pretty common lines for firemen to use. So I need to go ahead and lay this out. I'm going to use a speed square and I'm going to use a framing square to get the center on here. I'm gonna use a speed square and a framing square to lay all this stuff out and I'll show you guys all these valves. Now, this is a discharge manifold, so the discharge from the pump is a two and a half inch. It needs to be hooked up to the back. We need this half inch fitting, this two and a half, this one and a half, that one and a half. It needs to have a one inch outlet coming off the top to go to the hose rail that's on the back. It needs to have an inch and a half weld bung on the bottom part on the back side here so it can feed the monitor that's on the front. The monitor is that little fire nozzle that you see that you can control in the cab of the joystick and you can shoot water. I'm gonna get this whole thing laid out, marked up, and then I'm gonna send it over to Chucky. Chucky's gonna do all the um, cutting holes and welding. I don't have enough practice welding stainless steel and this is a very expensive piece. This thing cost about, I think $475 just for this piece the flat plate of steel that's actually sitting underneath this for the base and the cap on top. Um, I think that was like $175. So I'm not gonna be practicing on uh, that setup. So I went in doubt, send it to somebody that actually does it for a living. So let's get all these uh, valves taken off and get it marked up, laid out, and then hopefully packed up and ready to ship. All right, so I laid it all out as accurately as I could and ship it off to Chucky. Now, I have a drill press and I could use my drill press to drill this out, but it's stainless and I don't have any carbide bits. I think you can use high speed steel. I'm not sure if you guys know if you can use high speed steel to uh, drill stainless, then let me know in the comments. But I prefer to do carbide. I know Chucky has a mill that he can use um, some hole saws to knock some holes in it and hell it'd be a good part of the video. So I'm gonna get this packaged up and get it in the mail and get it shipped out to it. Ah well hell. Change of plans. Apparently Chucky doesn't have his uh, mill set up like I thought. So 
we're gonna have to drill all the holes in this ourselves. Well, I went to a local machine shop and asked them how much to punch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one on top. So eight total holes. There's two three and a quarter inch holes. There's three two and a quarter inch holes and one inch and a quarter hole. And for those, you know, plus the hole on the side for the street L and hole on side, top for the street L, which um, are again, inch and a quarter, two and a, which are inch and a quarter, both I believe. I can't remember, I have to look. Um, anyway, to punch all those, the machinist told me it'd be about 350 bucks. And I told him, so I told him now for 350 bucks, I can buy a pretty bad A, you know, a couple of pretty bad A, adjustable carbide fly cutters and use them myself. And he goes, yeah, but what mill are you gonna put them in? I don't own a mill, so, um, and I don't wanna wait on it. But my plan, I'm just gonna take some regular old high speed drill bits, lube, and a good drill press. And I'm just gonna drill holes all the way on the outside of this and then open them up with a carbide, with a rotary carbide bit on a die grinder. I think it'll work just fine. The key to drilling stainless steel is you're, you really don't ever wanna try to drill stainless steel by hand, especially larger size holes. You really need to use a drill press or preferably a mill that you can have a lot of downward feet pressure to at a very slow speed because stainless work hardens pretty quickly. If you take your normal cordless drill and you just squeeze the trigger and go to town, you are definitely going to work harden the material and then you're gonna smoke the bit. Um, I've drilled it before using high speed steel, uh, but last time I did it, I tried to use a hand drill and I ended up work hardening it. And after you work harden it, then you got to use a carbide bit to remove the work hardening from it because it's like freaking diamond hard at that point. But I'm gonna get this guy over to my drill press, get my drill press set up and figure out what size holes that I'm gonna actually try to start drilling. I don't know if I wanna use a, this is a three quarter inch drill bit in my drill press or maybe use a half inch drill because my drill press is a decent size but it's not huge so let me get it set up okay so i'm gonna introduce you guys to my 1967 16 inch rock wall delta rock wall brother drill press i completely took this thing apart years ago replaced all the bearings in it with coyo bearings put a vfd drive on it and i do have a top at the top is at a buddy of mine's shop we repainted it and did like a metal flake on it or well, actually, we got drunk one night and put a bunch of sparkly crap on top of it. And I have yet to be able to go back to his shop and pick it up. Um, but I did put a little adjustable belt on it. Now, I have this button set up for a start and stop. It's kind of an old school button. I haven't actually taken the time to mess with that. I have a permanent tachometer to mount to this. I glued a little magnet on the inside of this guy on the back. So I can have a digital display that I'm going to put right in this little corner. But I have, you know, another project. So in the meantime... I just got like a little photo tack deal. Before I get started, a lot of you guys make comments about the German flag I have in the shop. And I actually don't just have the German, there's the German flag, uh, Washington state flag. Um, that is the old Mississippi flag. I have yet to have, get another one, change it out. I've got the British flag, uh, I forget what, a Croatian flag, um, England, or excuse me, Australian, I need to get that right, that's the Australian flag. These are all flags that subscribers have sent to me over the years. I even have, I need to get an army flag. I never had anybody send me an army flag and I probably should have bought one by now, I just haven't. But I have the Marine Corps, United States Navy and the Air Force. I need to put an army run out there. That's a prisoner of war flag. I don't know what the deal with this prisoner of war flag is. Every single time I have taped it to the wall I have tried like uh, 3M uh, tape, all kinds of stuff, and it always ends up just like that. So, like it's just meant to be hanging just like that. Maybe hanging right underneath the um, Marine Corps flag for a reason. And I got my come and take it, uh, Battle of Gonzalez flag, Texas flag, and the American flag. American flag is all the way over on the left side of the shop, and there's not a single flag that is to the left of it. All these other flags are to the right. So. 
So if you see this German flag, it's just where I ended up putting it on the shop. I've got a spot for a couple more flags. I need to change out the Mississippi State flag. Um, it causes a lot of problems because the stars and bars on there, people think I'm a racist or something. I'm like, no, man, that was a Mississippi State flag up until like last year. So the drill press. This is not the factory table that came with it. The factory table that comes on these is a uh, just a solid base and it sucks. This is actually from Harbor Freight. It's really cheap. I'll have to look it up, see if I can find the part number again, but I modified it with this little plate back here. Tongue and groove, and it's got a little hole over here in case you want to use flood, flood lube. Right now, what I'm going to do is use some of this Napa brand cutting and grinding oil. And all I'm going to do is drill hole after hole after hole until all the center is gone. Oh my goodness, I've been sitting in front of this freaking drill press for about three hours now, punching a million freaking holes in this thing. And I'm gonna call it quits for the night. It's about eight o'clock and I've had enough. I will try to finish that up tomorrow. Um, I don't know if that carbide bit's gonna work real well. I might have to go get some more uh, tools or some more abrasives or something to holler that dude out. A mill with a fly cutter would have been much easier or some sort of carbide tip something or even taking it to machine shop. Like I said, the local machine shop here wanted 300 freaking dollars for it and I'm not gonna pay that. Well, I hope you liked the video. Stay tuned for tomorrow, part two, when I will finish that up and hopefully get back on that 12 valve Cummins over there. Get it working or get it put together or start building it rather. Hope you liked the video, hit the like button, throw your comments down below and get out and fix it.